This video illustrates the emergency peroperative near infrared fluorescence assessment of small bowel viability in a case of an incarcerated diaphragmatic hernia. A 27 year old male was transferred unstable overnight from a peripheral hospital with a two day history of epigastric pain, nausea, and bilious vomiting. He was hypotensive and tachycardic with a raised lactate. His background history is significant for a Bochtelac hernia repair in 2017, requiring a left anterolateral toracal laparotomy. The defect was closed with PDS sutures and he did not require a mesh. On the scout imaging of his CT, small bowel loops were apparent in the left thorax. This was visualized further on axial images. Small bowel loops with its mesentery under tension are present in the left thorax. There's concern for non-viable small bowel. The transverse colon and splenic flexure are also present in the thorax. Due to his abnormal anatomy, the spleen has been dragged to the midline of the upper abdomen. At operation, initially a midline laparotomy was performed and a small bowel was attempted to be reduced back into the abdomen. Unfortunately, we were not able to reduce safely via the laparotomy. A toracotomy was performed through its previous incision. As you can see, through our toracotomy, we can see dusky small bowel. This was reduced back into the abdomen. Once reduced and visualized through our laparotomy, warm packs were applied and we reassessed the small bowel. The surgeon's thumb indicates the duodenal jejunal flexure. As you can see, through our laparotomy, global small bowel perfusion appears much healthier, although there are some areas of hypoperfused mesentery and multiple black spots on the bowel itself. Perfusion was assessed using near infrared fluorescence. 25 micrograms of indocyanine green was drawn up with 10 milliliters of water for injection. 3 milliliters of this solution was given by the anesthetist as a bolus. The ICG perfusion shows good fluorescence. While this is reassuring, the interpretation of ICG is not standardized. Despite our experience with ICG, we did not make our clinical decision solely on the ICG perfusion assessment, but ICG can be used as a useful adjunct to provide reassurance. ICG relies on the subjective interpretation of the on-screen images to guide decision making. More work needs to be done to ensure an objective assessment can be performed. We did not perform a resection, but three of the malperfused areas were oversown with trio vicral sutures for reinforcement. It is important to note that the patient was unstable throughout the case, requiring 40 micrograms per minute of noradrenaline. This most likely would have precluded a safe anastomosis. The hernia sac was dissected free from the diaphragm and the diaphragmatic defect was repaired using a composite mesh. He was transferred to the intensive care unit postoperatively. He had an uncomplicated postoperative course with chest x-rays confirming postoperative restoration of normal anatomy. He was discharged after 10 days with no dietary restrictions and he will be followed up in the cardiothoracic outpatient department.